If you've worked with other animation programs like Flash or After Effects, the timeline may seem very familiar. However, the Edge Animate timeline has not only similarities, but some unique differences from other timelines. One of the first things you may notice is there's not frames that you're dealing with, but you're actually dealing with time increments, one second, one and a half seconds, or two seconds. Another difference is you have different elements on your timeline, like we have the penny here, and the penny's on top of the dime. And if you think you want to move this around, you cannot do this from the timeline. You have to instead do it in the elements area. If you click here and move this right below, now that changes, but you cannot do that from the timeline. Some of the buttons on the timeline are like the auto keyframe, which looks like a stopwatch here. Now, by setting this, anytime you move an element on stage or rotate it or change something, a keyframe is automatically added. You also have the auto transition mode. Now, by setting this button, anytime you've made two different keyframes, the computer will automatically give an in between or interpolate the different positions in between the two keyframes. You also have the toggle pin mode, which allows you to reverse engineer any type of animated movement you'd like to do. And last but not least, we have our easing button. Any type of animation, if you click this button, you have the option of having the computer set easing, meaning you don't want something to be the same speed constantly. So you can have something slow at the beginning or slow at the end, or even add a bounce to any element that you like. On the timeline, you have the ability to use your scripting to send things or stop things on an exact second, but you can also add labels. And you can do this one of two ways. You can either do Command L to add a label, and I'm going to undo that, Command Z, or place the playhead where you'd like it to be. And there's a small button right here that you can add your labels. Now with labels, instead of us saying that we'd like the playhead to go to 1.5 seconds, we can have it go to a section called resume. In addition to adding labels to your timeline, you can also add different triggers. So there's a button right here to insert a trigger and we can simply have stop codes here if we have an animation that's automatically playing. And we can edit this just by double clicking and opening this back up. And we can even move this to a different point if we need. In addition to adding scripts to your timeline, you can also add scripts to elements on the stage. For example, if we want to add a script to the penny here, you can simply go to the timeline and open up the actions for that. And I can simply say, we like it to stop at, and we'll use the label we just made and tell it to go to resume. Last but not least, if you want to stay a little more organized visually, you can go in and give each one of these element layers a color. So I can simply click here and change the color. And this way, anytime I have movement, we now see this full color that we have here. And if I decide to change this color, you can see all these working together. So there are plenty of ways to alter your elements using the timeline, and you'll probably be using this just as much, if not more, than using the stage.